All right, we're going to do a whirlwind turn of syncope. So as a background, by definition, it's a loss of consciousness and postural tone with spontaneous recovery. Uh, the mechanism is usually loss of brainstem perfusion, reticular activating system for approximately 10 seconds. The incidence makes up about 3% of ED visits, 1% of hospital admissions, and 33% can present with some sort of injury. When one looks at the etiology, about three, uh, one third are unknown, but the majority are usually uh, neural mediated at 24%, uh, cardiac in origin about 28, 20%, orthostatic 11%, and neurologic 10%. The main thing I want to point out with this particular slide is when one looks at the probability of survival, the one thing you do not want to miss in your evaluation is a cardiac cause in red. So you go through your differential, vasovagal, neurological causes, but the one area you do not want to miss is an underlying cardiac cause. So by history, history is one of the most important things you need to go through. The mechanism of the syncope, uh, did they lose consciousness? Did they lose postural tone? The situation surrounding the event, was it a car accident, swimming, bathroom, exposed to a shocking event? More history includes the pre-event and the post-event. If they had palpitations, the onset and offset, a regular rhythm versus an irregular, chest pain, shortness of breath, flushing, vertigo. And then their symptoms post-event, do they have confusion? weakness or numbness, incontinence or tonic-clonic seizure. On physical exam, uh, orthostatic should be a routine part of your initial evaluation as well as auscultation. The two most dangerous murmurs you don't want to miss are severe aortic stenosis and the murmur of Holcomb. EKG, you want to look for prior infarcts, brady or tachyarrhythmias, QTC prolongation, Brugada syndrome, or arrhythmogenic ventricular dysplasia. The diagnostic heal, unfortunately for this, is only about two to 7%. The medications that we do have available to treat syncope uh, include, uh, that can cause syncope include hypertensive agents. You definitely want to ask the question about the interaction between Viagra and nitrates, antihypertensive agents that can drop your blood pressure. Of course, all the antiarrhythmics that uh, went through before the previous uh, lecture, QTC, prolonging drugs. You will spend a lot of your time when you do your initial evaluation just stopping these contributory drugs, psychotropic drugs, hypoglycemic agents, and of course, illicit drugs. Reflex-mediated syncope is a response to a trigger that results in increased vagal tone and withdrawal of sympathetic tone. There's different types based on triggers, such as micturation, defecation, and swallowing. The most common subtypes are neuromediated syncope, and carotid hypersensitivity. Neural mediated syncope is a triggered by blood, pain, prolonged standing, stressful situation. There's decreased preload that leads to decreased venous return and decreased cardiac output. Uh, you have an increase in heart rate and contractility in an underfilled ventricle, and there's a paradoxical reflex of mechanoreceptors leading the withdrawal of peripheral sympathetic tone and increased vasal tone and vasodilation and bradycardia. No cardiogenic syncope and treatment. There are pharmacologic agents, the mineralocorticoids, beta blockers, alpha agonists such as midodrine, and then serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Non-pharmacologic measures are a first-line measure, especially in uh, neurocardiogenic, uh, orthostatic training, support hose, uh, even uh, an indication with permanent pacing. Carotid hypersensitivity is a stimulation of the carotid baroreceptors from gentle pressure over the carotid bifurcation. The gentle pressure is applied for five to 10 seconds. There's hypersensitivity. If you see a sinus pause, cardio inhibitory for three seconds or more, or a fall in blood pressure by greater than 50 millimeters of mercury, that's a vasodepressive. Cardiogenic syncope involves all the typical tachyarrhythmias as well as bradyarrhythmias. And don't forget the anatomic the Holcomb and, ACE and uh, aortic stenosis, ischemia and previous infarction, atrial myxoma, and then massive pulmonary embolism. Uh, I probably could not finish this without discussing the idea of the life vest. Life vest be has become a prominent part of our practice. Its indications are primarily in individuals who are post-MI, EF of less than 35%. Uh, this is a great technology to use when there's the 40-day waiting period 
for uh, an ICD assessment or the 90 day after a cabbage or PC, PTCA. Uh, it's uh, covered for the three to nine month waiting period. And uh, you wanna think about those individuals who may have a terminal disease that you do not want to commit to a defibrillator. Uh, it serves a very good role in those particular areas. Syncope in athletes, you will see this as part of your practice in all the different common types, the Holcomb, WPW, Brugadas, arrhythmogenic ventricular dysplasia. Do not forget anomalous coronary artery. Uh, that's especially common in patients below the age of 40. Bradyarrhythmias, uh, he covered the pacemakers already, uh, only to state that you want to catch the obvious, the Mobitz type two, where you have a dropped QRS or a third degree AV block. Tilt table tests, you talk to electrophysiologists and they'll tell you that the sensitivity and specificity they believe is probably closer to 50%. I think these numbers are probably a little bit high. Uh, I may order a tilt table test about once every 10 years. So let's look at all the different diagnostic tests that are available and their yields. An EKG, Holzer monitoring, an external loop recorder, tilt table, EP studies, EP with structural heart disease, and then neurocardiogenic syncope. Along comes uh, the implantable loop recorders that have a far superior yield. Remember, you still need to do an underlying at least 24, 48 hour Holter before you commit to these more sophisticated testing. Uh, there are two types that are available right now. The Reveal, which is by Medtronic and Abbott, has an implantable loop recorder as well. The indications are increased risk for cardiac arrhythmias, management of atrial fibrillation, palpitations, syncope, and even cardi uh, crypto, uh, cryptogenic stroke. So it has a very broad indication, so there's a lot of uh, different indications you can use an implantable loop recorder. It looks something like this is the output, this is what you see on your dashboard. You can detect all major types of rhythms. The battery life is good for three years, and it stores up to 50 minutes of EKG storage, and it's MRI conditional. Here is the RAS study that looked at uh, an assessment of syncope, the yield and cost effectiveness of using these implantable loop recorder. If you look at the very top, there's unexplained uh, syncope. These patients were randomized to an implantable loop recorder versus con uh, conventional testing, a diagnosis, and then they were crossed over to either uh, an EP study or an implantable loop recorder, and the diagnostic yield was 43% for an implantable loop recorder versus 20%. You're getting double the amount of information by just implanting uh, an implantable loop recorder. So when one looks at the ACC uh, AHA guidelines for a scientific uh, statement on evaluation of syncope, you see starting at the top, it still goes back to good history and physical exam. If it's unexplained syncope, you can do an exercise echo. Uh, if that's normal, then you can go on to do uh, evaluation, the complete evaluation, frequent episodes, you can do a Holter. It's the infrequent episodes where it's very powerful tool that you need to pick up those particular diagnosis. So in conclusion, it all starts off just in the guideline. History and physical are key aspects of the evaluation. You really wanna spend a lot of your time looking at drug-drug interactions which may occur between the different agents. A negative test does not permit us to give up on the patient. What you will see a lot of time in your practice or patients who go from doctor to doctor to doctor with pre-syncopal or syncopal episodes, they get a Holter, it's fine, and then the evaluation stops there. That's where you get an opportunity to push a little bit further and think about an ILR. You want to use tools that give you the most amount of information and help you obtain your diagnosis. And when everything is negative, you have to keep looking. So, that's it, thank you.